In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 13 through 22. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your heart sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned 
those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Today's gospel lesson comes to us from John chapter 14. Jesus said to the disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be with you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior. Jesus the Christ. Amen. Have you ever noticed that it can be pretty difficult to explain a relationship? And it seems that the harder you try to explain a relationship, the flatter it seems. Have you ever wondered why that is? And I've been doing a little bit of thinking about relationships and how we try to explain them this week. Um, And what I've kind of landed on, what I've come up with, is that it can be really difficult to explain a relationship because we tend to explain actions, and a relationship is an experience. It's something that's lived. So the same action done by two people can have very different meanings. Now think about it. A yard professional bringing me a fistful of dandelions from my yard is very different than Charlie bringing me a fistful of dandelions. With the yard professional, I feel embarrassment, shame. With Charlie, I feel love. Now today's scripture is a scripture of relationship. And so that can make it a little difficult to talk about. But we hear the relationship over and over in today's passage. You will be given another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth. You will know him because he abides with you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, meaning Jesus, but you will see me. These are words of relationship spoken by Jesus to his disciples the night he shared his last meal with them. 
Now they received hard news that night. They had found out that Jesus was going, or Judas was going to betray Jesus. They found out that Peter was going to deny him and that Jesus was going to leave them, but they would know the way. They felt anxious, scared, alone. How could they do this? And so Jesus reassures them. This relationship is not ending. It is just the beginning. You may not understand it all now because relationships are hard to explain, but you will experience it and you will know. You're not going to be left alone. The advocate is going to come to you. Now the word advocate, it's from the Greek word uh, paraclete, which means the one who comes alongside. So while translated the advocate, um, we could also say that Jesus promises the comforter. Jesus promises the one who will come alongside. Jesus promises the one who will abide with us. Jesus promises us the advocate and then promises that this advocate will be a spirit of truth. Now that word truth, it appears all over the Gospel of John. In fact, we heard it proclaimed last week when Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Um, Jesus stands before Pilate and says, for this I was born, for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. And Pilate responds, what is truth? What is truth? Truth is Jesus. The truth that the Spirit gives to us, the truth that the Spirit reveals to us, is the same truth that is revealed all throughout the Gospel. Jesus is the Word become flesh, the only begotten Son of the Father, who entered into our world and our lives so that we may believe and have life through him. So the Spirit does not unveil to the disciples some sort of secret knowledge, some unheard word, uh, something that God is saving for a special occasion. No, the Spirit simply redeclares that which Jesus has already proclaimed. The Spirit will help the disciples look back on what they heard so they can go, oh, that's where God was. That's what Jesus meant. The Spirit is not declaring something new, but redeclaring what Christ has already said. You see, there was much that would happen to the disciples that they had no idea would happen. Uh, their life was changing, the world was changing. There was the crucifixion, the resurrection, the ascension. There was loss, there was redemption, there was newness of life, there was difficulty in forming the early church. Much had changed, much was different than what they had expected, but the truth remained. So they experienced things that altered their perspective, and so the Holy Spirit was with them redeclaring the truth that they already knew so they could look back and say that is where God was in this time. And so it's our work and it's our honor to share in this same work. So every time we proclaim the gospel, we are in essence uh, doing the same work that the Spirit does, re-proclaiming the truth. This is holy work, and it's important work, now more than ever. You see, we're going to need to shift our expectations of what it looks like to gather in community. We're going to need to adapt the ways that we grieve and the ways that we comfort those who grieve. And we're going to wonder, will things ever be normal again? And we're going to be able to look back and see that things are always changing, but we are never alone. And so we have work to do. We have good news to share. We have hope to give to those who are hopeless, 
who are lonely, who are grieving. Now, a year or so ago, I officiated at the funeral um, of a young person in a, a fairly tragic sort of situation. So it was an afternoon funeral, and so I brought Layla to her morning daycare, and I told her that Dad was going to pick her up because I would be officiating this funeral. Now, one of the ways that we try to pass on faith to our kids, uh, one of the ways that we hope that they will grow into, into disciples, is to share our faith and find teaching moments in all sorts of situations. So after I told her that I was going to officiate this funeral, I told her, there's going to be a lot of sad people there, and I have important promises to share. I'm going to share that they're never alone, God is always with them. And God was always with their friend who died. And I'm also going to share that after we die, we begin life everlasting. And she nods along from the back seat. And then at seven years old said, that's important to be reminded when you're sad. That heaven is kind of like we live with Jesus instead of Jesus living with us. And isn't that the truth? The Holy Spirit is Jesus living with us until the time we go to live with Jesus. This is the word that the Spirit carries through our ears and into our hearts time and time again. This is the work at which the Spirit of truth toils endlessly, tirelessly, reproclaiming the gospel so that people will come to believe, and in believing will encounter Christ anew. The world changes, and we change, but these things do not change. Not really. Truth does not change, because the truth is love. The truth is God. God is with you, now and always. Amen. Thank you.
with the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we welcome our God into the sanctuaries of our homes, let us pray for all the needs of the world, responding to each petition with the words, O oh God, hear us. Abiding God, come into all the homes around the globe from which your people offer their prayer. Bless Christian leaders as they guide the church through this pandemic. Show our pastors and our church councils the way forward. For this we pray, O oh God, hear us. Creating God, revitalize the health of oceans, rivers, lakes, springs, glaciers, and other bodies of water that give life to your creatures. Form us into a baptized body that protects the waters on which we rely. For this we pray, O oh God, hear us. Righteous God, instill in all the leaders of nations a desire for justice and the will to serve the oppressed. We pray especially for those nations in which dictatorship threatens the population. We also pray that you guide our nation's governors in their difficult pathways between the threat of disease and the dangers of scarcity and isolation. Bring our legislators into agreement about how to assist those in need. Give us patience in, in facing our current hardships. For this we pray, O oh God, hear us. Compassionate God, visit all who are in great need, those who suffer from the coronavirus, those living in loneliness and fear, those without jobs, and those who mourn their dead. Uphold those whose futures have been taken away from them. We pray for health care workers. We pray for residents in care homes, prisons, and refugee camps. We pray for countless persons who carry heavy burdens on their backs. And we call out to you, knowing that you hear us. For this we pray, O oh God, hear us. Benevolent God, Give the world a vaccine. For this we pray, O oh God, hear us. Eternal God, your kingdom is here now, and it has no end. We remember the saints who have gone before us. We remember Virgil Hilborn, those who have died of COVID-19, and those we remember in our hearts. Unite us forever in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. For this we pray, O oh God, hear us. With bold confidence in your love, merciful God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord.
remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.